video, I'm going to run through the techniques used in my new pattern for flip-flop socks. It's called Sidewalk Talk Flip-Flop Socks, something kind of fun and different for us sock knitters. If you'd like to get your copy of the pattern to follow along, just click the little I in the upper right-hand corner to go to my website. There'll be more information there. Um, this is an intermediate sock pattern. I really highly suggest that you have some sock knitting experience before you give these a try. They're just kind of the extra thing of the split between the toes is maybe too much for someone who's never knit socks before. But if you'd like to give socks a try and they're brand new to you, I'll give you a link here to the tutorial and pattern that I recommend for brand new sock knitters. That'll get you started. And then if you want to knit these, you can make them your second pair of socks that you knit. But knit those first and then we'll get and then you can get into something like this. These are sized for women um, of average foot width, any shoe size. And I've actually put in two sizes. Um, I mean, you can use in, knit any shoe size, of course, but I've put in two sets of instructions for regular toes and longer toes. I actually designed these for myself and realized that they weren't going to fit everybody because <laughs> I have long toes. So I had to make it for regular toes and longer toes. But how to measure and all that information is on my website and, of course, in the pattern. This uses regular old sock yarn, um, fingering weight yarn, and you can use... Uh, you, you can use a whole 100 gram hank to make crew socks, but I also have instructions in there for little shorty socks. And I'll give you a close up look at those in the next section. These are knit toe up using Judy's Magic Cast On. I've never actually used Judy's Magic Cast On in a sock pattern before, so this is the first time. They're knit toe up with a German short row heel. Really, once you get past the toes section, this is just a normal pair of socks. You know, that you can wear them like normal socks or you can wear them with flip flops. Yeah, and they're really just normal socks once you get past the toes. So regular sock yarn, sized for women, average foot width, what else did I want to say? Intermediate pattern. Um, well, if I forgot anything, I'll be sure to get it in the next section. Oh, no, I know what I want to say. We're going to use Judy's Magic Cast On, which means that we're going to start these socks using Magic Loop. And if you're a Magic Loop knitter, that's great. You can just keep going with Magic Loop. Um, uh, for the rest of the sock. But if you, you know, as an experienced sock knitter, if you want to go ahead and switch to your preferred method for knitting socks, like I finished the toe on Magic Loop and then I switched to nine inch circulars because that's my jam right now. You can just, you can knit it however your favorite way of knitting socks is once we get past the toes. That's it. I think it's the last thing I wanted to say. Yes. If I forgot something, I'll say it in a minute in the next section where we get started with the cast on. If you have your yarn, this is the kind of yarn that everyone has a hank of somewhere in their house, right? Just regular old sock yarn. You have your yarn, your needles, your pattern. We are ready to get started. Before we do the cast on, let's get a close-up look at the socks. Okay, these are a pair I knit just out of regular sock yarn. Of course, they're all out of regular sock yarn. I don't know why I said that. But I knit these um, kind of a crew sock length. And we have the split between the toes. And then these, I have instructions for how to make these, um, exactly how to do the heel section, because these are little shorty socks, kind of like Japanese tabe socks. And um, I need to weigh these. I will give that information on my website and in the pattern exactly how much yarn these use, because you can definitely get a couple of pair of these out of 100 grams of sock yarn, um, because they're, they're just little shorty socks. They don't use much yarn. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with Judy's Magic Cast On. I am going to be using much bigger yarn and needles for this demonstration so that you can see what I'm doing really well. And we have to start on Magic Loop. I'm using a 32 inch circular needle. And I'm going to start with a, spl a slip knot, but I'm not going to leave a whole lot of tail. Okay, got my, um, I think I've got this upside down. No, nope. let me think. Okay, I've got my tail end here and my working yarn up here. I'm going to hold the two needles together facing to the left, and I'm going to set myself up like I'm doing a slingshot cast on. And I, I want to cast on, for this demonstration, I want to cast on five stitches on each needle. And this is Judy's Magic Cast On. I already have one stitch on the back needle, which is my slip knot. I want to get a stitch here on the front needle. And the way that I do that is I swing both needles up 
past the yarn on my index finger, grab that between the needles, and now I have two. And now I want to put a, a stitch on the top needle again. Um, I go past the yarn on my thumb, grab that yarn between the two needles, and there we go. This is not a sturdy cast on, but it's pretty cool the way it works. Past, grab it with the bottom needle. Past, grab it with the top needle. Okay, and if you want a really slow, long explanation of Judy's Magic Cast On, I will give you a link here to my video on, um, it's a longer video on this technique. Now what we have here is really unstable, but not for long. I'm going to turn the work so my needles are facing to the right, and because this cast on doesn't have knots on, you know, holding the stitches down or anything, everything's kind of loosey-goosey, I'm going to wrap the working yarn and the tail end together. And I'm going to pull out this back needle. And then knit across the stitches. I don't know why I'm holding the tail end with my left hand. Not necessary. Okay, I'm going to turn the work and get myself back into the magic loop starting position. Pull the back needle long and then knit across the stitches on the front needle. I'm going to want to shorten that tail too because that's going to drive me nuts. Oh, I want to back up and explain something. This first needle stitch that I knit is the slip knot. And now all of the rest of stitches on this side are twisted. So we're going to knit them through the back loop. Okay, and turn the work. Okay, everything's a little more stable now that we've actually worked around. And I'm going to give the tail end a tug to tighten things up a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to start the increases. And both the big toe and the little toe piece are worked exactly the same, um, just more stitches on one than the other. I'm going to knit across to the last stitch and then KFB, which is knit front back. I do a normal knit stitch, leave that loop on the left needle, swing the tip of the needle into the back loop of that stitch, wrap it and pull it through, and I just increased by one. Turn the work. And then the first stitch of the second side, I'm going to KFB here as well. Okay, and I'm at the beginning of my round because my tail end is here. And you're going to work that increase every other round following the pattern for the piece you're knitting and the number. I want to work one more round to show you. Because this is really different from other sock tutorials that I have out because we don't normally start at the tippy toe like we do with these. We normally start kind of at the base of the toes and work our way around. So this is kind of a different sock beginning. And I have some tight stitches. There we go. Now, when you're knitting this, what I have is a flat piece, but it happens eventually the piece starts to want to fold up on itself. Go ahead and let it, because that will actually give you the shape of the toe. Okay, so every other round you're going to KFB. 
and of course that's written out row by row in the pattern. Okay, then what you have are a separate big toe and little toe piece. And again, I have knit these huge. These are enormous Sasquatch socks <laughs> that don't fit anyone so that I can demonstrate to you so you can see what, what I'm doing. So I have, um, when I finish the big toes or big toe piece, I slip those stitches to double pointed needles just to kind of hang on to them. I'm going to knit off of the double pointed needles onto the circular needles. I knit this second, so this is still on the needle with the working yarn attached, and we're going to combine everything onto one needle. Now, this is, I, I'm actually going to look at my instructions as I do this because this is, um, this is the fiddly part to create the, um, the section between the toes. First thing I'm going to do is to tink back two stitches. And that means to unknit two stitches. Tink back two stitches, and I'm going to put those two stitches on scrap yarn. Just slide those on scrap yarn. And I like to use um, a wool sock yarn so it has some grip to it, so it's not going to slide out. These are really enormous stitches, though. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, then switching to the big toe piece, I am going to tink back one stitch and then slip that stitch back on the needle. And the working yarn is going to be coming from the second stitch from the end there. And then I'm going to take another piece of scrap yarn and slip the first two stitches onto the scrap yarn. Okay, so we have all of these tinking, scrap yarn, everything. Now it's time to combine them. I have my working yarn coming from the little toe piece here. Just ignore everything that's flopping around with needles and scrap yarn and everything. Just focus on your working yarn and your next stitch, my next stitch of the big toe pieces. You're going to follow the pattern to knit the number that it says. And I have the, these written out really clearly in the pattern, I promise you, this, this part. I'm actually, I have it printed out big for myself right now so I can see. And when you get to the halfway point, we're going to turn the work, which in Magic Loop means we're going to pull the needle along and knit across the second half of the stitches. Things are getting tidier as I drop double pointed needles here. Okay, I have two stitches left on the big toe piece and I want to slip these to the same piece of scrap yarn that I had that I started the round with. So re-thread that and without knitting them, I'm going to slip those onto there. So I have four stitches on scrap yarn on the big toes piece, and now we jump over here to the little toes piece. I'm going to take the scrap yarn that I have going here, and slip those first two stitches of scrap yarn. Okay, so all of that done, we have the stitches between the toes, four stitches on the little toes, little toes piece, four stitches on the big toes piece, all on scrap yarn, and they're held, and we're going to get back to them in a few minutes. For now, I'm going to knit to the end of the round. Okay, 
And now I want to mark this spot as the beginning of my round, and that's going to make a difference as we do the heel. But really, at this point, everything's combined. Everything's kind of loosey-goosey, but it's going to tighten up as you, um, as you work subsequent rounds. And we're going to tighten all this up with Kitchener Stitch, and we can do a little, um, put a little, a couple of little stitches in here to tighten it up. I'm going to show you that here in just a minute. But mark this as the beginning of your round, and right now you can switch to whatever your preferred method of knitting socks is. You can stay on magic loop, you can switch to nine inch circulars, you can go to double pointed needles, two circulars, whatever it is you like, you can switch to that now because you're just going to be knitting the length of the foot. Okay, now I got past that. That was the most complicated part. Let me see what the next section is. And I think I want to show you the Kitchener stitch now. Okay, again, Sasquatch sock. And this is what I have been doing in the pairs that I've knit of these, is I um, knit a few rounds, maybe a few inches, and then I go in and work the Kitchener stitch on the space between the toes. It's just easier to do it before the whole sock is finished, I think. So I'm going to slip one side of the held stitches onto a double pointed needle and take out the scrap yarn and the other side. And if you've worked Kitchener stitch, it's pretty self-explanatory with just one little difference. Okay. We left a long tail on the big toes piece for a reason. Get that threaded and take a look at this. I'm going to be Kitchener stitching these together, but I'm looking at the space right under the needles. There's, there's a gap there. And this is pretty normal. Anytime you change direction in your knitting, you know, whether you're knitting a a raglan sweater or heels of socks or whatever, you can get a gap there. And all I'm going to do is just put in a couple of little stitches, nothing fancy, just grabbing something that looks sturdy, and I've tightened that all up. And you'll see when I do the Kitchener stitch here that it does actually look really good. So I'm going to purl my setup rows, purl on the front, knit on the back, leave those on. And then my chant for the Kitchener stitch, if you've watched my videos before, is front needle, knit off, purl, back needle, purl off, knit. And if you need a review of the Kitchener stitch, I'll give you a link here to my video on Kitchener stitch. Knit off, purl, purl off, knit, knit off, purl, purl off, knit, and then knit off, purl off. Tighten that up. You can tighten it up really tight and then stretch it back out again so that, um, that's what I like to do so there are no gaps. I know there are no gaps. And then on the other side, our working yarn is over here on the other side. I'm going to do the same thing and just a couple of tiny quick stitches to tighten up the space. Okay, and that is the space between the toes, all tidy and neat. And Oops, I can actually tighten that up a little better. I didn't weave in the end here, so it looks a little loose. Actually, I'm not happy with the way that one looks. You can watch me redo things. I do this all the time, where I stitch things up, and I'm like, ah, oh, that's pulling. Or, ah, oh, that doesn't look quite right. I'm not happy with the way that stitch looked. So I took it out, and we'll redo it. It's really going to show up in this. Um, in this worsted weight yarn anyway. That's better. Okay, all tidy. Let me see, check my list here. 
Kitchener, scrap yarn, tapestry needle. Okay, we finished the toes piece. So you followed the directions to knit the length of the foot for the size of shoe that you're knitting, and then um, it'll tell you exactly when to stop knitting. And next up, we're going to cover the German short row heel. When you finish the foot of your sock, you're ready to start the heel. We're doing a German short row heel, and if you've knit any of my socks that have German short row heels, same techniques. Um, just follow the instructions and the pattern for the numbers and everything like that. But I'm going to show you the technique here, and um, I am going to switch. Well, I'll explain it. Let's take a look. Here is my Sasquatch sock, and I'm just about at the end of my round. I'm going to take out the stitch marker. That's the end of my round. I'm actually going to knit the heel on double pointed needles. And the heel is just a little bit of knitting. I'm going to let the other stitches just hang out on the um, nine inch circular while I do this. And this is my preferred method for knitting a heel. You can do anything you want. I think it also works well for demonstration, which is why I'm doing it. So you knit the number of stitches. And I knew, I knew while I was putting this sample together that I would be talking and not counting. So I put a stitch marker in <laughs> for myself so that I could talk and not count and not worry about it. But you will want to count because the left and right sock, they are, they are different. The heel lands in a different spot. Okay. And now we're ready to work a German short row. I'm going to turn the work, slip that stitch from left to right, pull up on the stitch, and yarn forward to purl across. Whoops. My double pointed needles he keeps hitting the work surface. Okay, I knit up to the spot on the purl side, turn the work. untangle everything, of course, slip that stitch from left <clears throat> to the right needle. Then my working yarn, I pulled it forward. I'm going to pull up on that, kind of smash that stitch, and then knit to the next stitch. And I have this written out row by row with the exact numbers. Okay, I knit up to that spot. The pattern tells me I turn the work, slip that stitch from left to right, pull up on the stitch, and yarn forward to purl. Whoops. Okay, I purled up to the spot, <clears throat> turn the work, yarn forward, slip that stitch from left to right, pull up on it, and then knit to the next spot. And that is the technique used on the first half of the heel. And now I'm going to show you how to work the second half of the heel. I'm 
I'm going to knit up to the first German short row stitch. We call it a double stitch. It looks like a double stitch. It has two strands. Here we go. I'm going to knit those two stitches together and the next one or the next double stitches together. Turn the work and then work a German short row and then purl up to the first double stitch. And when I hit that, I'm going to purl those two halves of the stitch together and the next one, and then turn the work and work a German short row. So those are the techniques used in the heel. You just follow the pattern for the exact number to knit. And once you finish all of the instructions for the heel, you can just resume knitting the cuff of the sock um, however you want, you know, whatever technique you were using before, if you want to switch it up again. And, um, I, you know, like for me, I would be switching back to the 9-inch circulars. I would just knit off of, off of the double-pointed needle onto the 9-inch circular and keep going. And when I do, also, um, changing directions, just like we did with the, the Kitchener stitch at, between the toes, I usually like to pick up a couple of stitches in the gap between the heel and the rest of the stitches and then on the next round decrease those stitches out and that keeps there from being uh, a gap in the work where you've changed direction in your knitting. And actually I have a whole video on that. If, um, if you want more detail on that I'll give you a link here to that video. And that is it. Those are the techniques used in sidewalk talk flip-flop socks. Uh, something fun. I hope you guys enjoy the pattern. Good luck.